So now I want to get to my talk. Um, I want you guys to think about why the Net College is here. This is the 50th celebration of the Net College. What's the reason why the Net College was built? Why is it in a circle? Why, why was this place built? From the very beginning, it was really for <clears throat> promoting the Nebe finding ways to strengthen the Nen way. So our, our elders, all my chains that I just mentioned to you, to Masana, to Nana, your chains, your Nana, and your relatives, they know and they understand the world <clears throat> through a system of beliefs. It's about spirituality. It's about universal relationships. It's about clan relations. Identity, spiritual ceremonies, language, culture, sense of place, land ethics. They knew that. They know about it. And it and it's part of the Behazani, but such a lake. These are primordial doctrines or laws, the first laws that were made for us. The first laws that were that were given to us <clears throat> as gifts by the holy people. The reason why is because the holy people loved us so much. No, the Nina. So they gave us Khujan. But in order to understand Khujan, you have to look at the other side of the coin, which home ke, ke. So they loved us so much that they said, here's ke, and here's how you're going to use it. Ke is love. Respect, understanding. And they said, that's how you treat each other. That's how you have a relationship with each other. And keh is part of keh, your clan, your relations, your kinship relations. And they loved us so much, they said, you're going to be kiahani, you're going to be my adishkiri, you're going to be kachi, and so forth and so on. You know? And they said, here are the gifts we were <clears throat> and these doctrines, the Behazpani, the Tessalay, the first of all the laws, they can't be changed by human beings. These are spiritual gifts that were established by the holy people. The internet. You cannot change it. You can move to Boston, move to New York City, and you still have K, and you still have to practice K. No matter how you change, it's never going to change. It's here with us permanently. And that's what makes us very different than anybody else in the world. So I want to just lay that kind of as a foundational piece for you to think about. Then I want to talk about historical context. I want to talk about what happened before. And what happens, what happened recently, what's going on, what's the result, and what's next. So here's historical context. Take a look at this little diagram. So all the, the blue section is when we were in charge as Indian people. But look at all the red section. We have very little, if anything, to do with how we live. We were dictated to by the federal government of the United States and they told us, this is how you're going to live. This is where you're going to live. This is what you're going to know. They controlled everything. So for hundreds of years, we did not have control of our lives. It's only recently that we've begun to have some say-so in how we live. <clears throat> through sovereignty, through exercise of sovereignty. So we're in this nation-building era, <clears throat> that's probably 
in less than 20 years. So a lot of people think, okay, oh, you Indians, you guys have been here for a long time, you know? You should be further along and, and more advanced. But we've only enjoyed our own decision-making in about 20 years. So you, as young people, you're in a very special era. In my lifetime, the BIA controlled everything. The BIA controlled everything. The BIA controlled our people, the way they thought. It's only recently that we're able to think for ourselves. <clears throat> so before, as I mentioned, the Debe Oath is it includes how we think about life from a traditional Navajo perspective, about governance, about land, about identity, spirituality. And why? Why is this important? With this, with the Nebe Oji, we get the blessings of good thinking. In the jungle, we're blessed with that. We're blessed with our language, the Nebaza. That's a blessing that was given to us. We were blessed with Nata planning. It's not any kind of Nata, it's the Nekeju Nata. Independence. The Navajo people, unbelievably, we've gone so far. <clears throat> I travel around a lot. Tomorrow I go to Canada. And I've seen reservations that are just one mile by one mile by one mile. <laughs> and when I tell people, I'm from Navajo, I tell them you can drive from the east side of Navajo Nation to the west side, it'll take you four or five hours. <laughs> and you're not going to even touch a non-Indian community. And people say, they don't believe me. And I said, you can go from the southern part of Navajo Nation, drive north, and you won't even run into a non-Indian town or city. They said, we can't believe that. Are you sure? I said, if you're driving too fast, you can get caught by the Navajo Nation police. <laughs> they said, really? You have your own police? <laughs> they can't believe it, you know? <laughs> we have a tremendous piece of property. And we don't have all of it. Last August, <clears throat> my wife and I and a group of judges and medicine people, we went to Zishnapapisi and Zishnapapisi. We went over there and visited. And every Navajo should go there. <clears throat> you should go there. Take a medicine person with you. Go over there and pray. Go over there in the next cup. Reacquaint yourself for, with the next cup. We came away very different. <coughs> we were blessed with those two mountains. We were where Changing Woman was at, where Changing Woman was born. We were where Twin Warriors were at. We actually saw where they ran. When you go up to a top of the Islam of the you can actually see them where they made a trail, you know, where they were running. Mm -hmm. They even have a bathtub up there where they bathe. They even have a sweat lodge up there. <laughs> they even have a wash basin where they wash their face and wash in the morning, you know. So the stories that, that are being told to you hope they're being told to you. Mm -hmm. It's really true. Really true. Karen went with us. We went up to the top. Unbelievable. You know? mm -hmm. So these were all the blessings that have been given us. And the reason why is because we're supposed to live to be 102 years old. That's the blessing. That's the purpose of life to live to be old, to live to be old. That's your purpose. So if you're wondering, why am I here? <laughs> How, why, you know, 
Not because your mom and dad got together nine months ago, you know, and then you're born. You're here because you're to live to be 102 years old so that you can have four levels of grandkids. And the Nebo'oath is, <clears throat> it's to help us maintain balance and respect between us and everything around us, the universe and everything in the universe. That's a prescription for life on how to live in Ojon, how to live in beauty, harmony, and respectful ways. That's the way it was before. That's partly the way it is today. So central to this, to this system of life is Navajo creation scriptures. The world's before and the journey narratives. So you have all the worlds that came before, the stories that are uh, the stories that are embedded in these worlds. And now, in the white, the glittering world, the twin warriors journey to see their the sun carrier, their father, their, your stories of your clans, and other journeys. You're on a journey too. You're on this hero journey. You're a hero as well. So you're being watched as you're on this journey of life, just like I'm being watched. And so it's not just a twin warrior's journey, it's your journey as well. <clears throat> dwelling made of dawn. So in the white world, the internet, the holy being created the internet and gave us a name. <clears throat> They loved us so much, they gave us a spiritual name. They said, that's your name. This is the way you'll be known. And we were given these gifts, like I said before. Here's your language. Here's where you're going to live. Here's how you're going to be spiritual. Here's A, your relationship. Here's the knowledge that you should have to be happy, to be in a state of pleasure. It was given to us. It's right here. One time we had a meeting here at the Net College, <clears throat> and there was all these medicine people, the elders sitting there, and we were wrestling with this, with this issue. Oh, you're chanting. Oh, how did you get out of then Mike Mitchell, the late Mike Mitchell, stood up and he says, the answer is right there, he says. And we're all looking around, you know. The answer is right there in front of you, he says. Then he said, there's the Mother Earth, there's the plants and animals, there's the water, there's the trees, there's the air, all different kinds of air, there's the mountains, he said. And all the way up to the stars, he says, the answer is right there, he says. And we said, oh, yeah, you're right. Here, we were talking about things way over here. You know, we're talking about things way over here. He said, it's right there. So those are gifts that were given to us. There was a time <clears throat> when these gifts were forgotten. And now, yeah, we're, we're everywhere. These monsters were everywhere. And these foundational doctrines were forgotten. The Venice Ani, the Sassalei, people forgot about it. And chaos ensued. The Dine people were being killed right and left. And the elders were saying, how did this happen? What's going on? Why are this? So all the elders got together and started talking and saying, what's going on? Why is this happening? There were some kids playing over here on this side, over here of the, of the village. The elders were talking, <clears throat> they finally noticed the kids were gone. They said, where'd the kids go? So everybody started looking around for these children. And finally the holy people told them, we took the kids to <clears throat> Changi Woman. The Changi Woman lives on the Pacific Ocean in a place where the land just kind of floats. I always think Hawaii is maybe this where where she's at, you know. So my wife and I honeymooned in Hawaii, you know. We looked around.
come for her. You know, we couldn't find her. So she's out there somewhere. So the kids were taken over there. So the parents and all the that whole people, so they said, we're going to go <clears throat> look for them. So they traveled all the way to the Pacific Ocean, waited there for 12 years. And the 12th year, <clears throat> they came back. Why did J.J. Roman take them? To teach them about all these gifts that they had forgotten. So when the kids were no longer children, they were the same age as many of you here, they were responsible for teaching the people about what they were taught. And the people traveled all the way back. And when they got to the Hosli, they had a Fujian Winter Ceremony. And it was to restore this covenant it was to sanctify the Diné, once again, in the knowledge that we should have, the knowledge that Diné College stands for. To me, that's what Diné College stands for, is the sanctification of Navajo traditional knowledge. It's the sanctification of the covenant that we have with the holy people. That's what Diné College stands for. That's, what, that's the way I think. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what kind of classes you're taking, but you should be taking Navajo culture, Navajo studies, Navajo way of thinking. Why? Because we need it the most today. The problems that the Navajo Nation is facing is the lack of traditional Navajo thinking. That's the big problem. That's where the sanctification occurred. And these mountains were rethought, re-recognized, reconstituted. They remembered it. They reset. They said, yes, you are our mountains. We're very, very fortunate to have these mountains around us. That's our boundary for where we live and how we live. From these mountains, there are a lot of other mountains also to the east, to the south, to the west, to the north, all around the world. And these mountains, <coughs> So the creator, the holy people, created the Navajo, the Na, gave us a holy name, gave us a distinct language, gave us spiritual ceremonies, gave us four sacred mountains because they loved us, they cared for us. She went, she yaja, he did no, he like a yak. And that made us sovereign. That made us independent. That made us strong. And the holy beings blessed us with the sacred mountains, gave it supreme authority, gave it power, and blessed us with all these gifts of prosperity and development in the all four direction. And gave us a cosmic hogan, our home. When you go to Farmington, when you go to Albuquerque, when you go to Phoenix, LA, wherever you go, it feels different, huh? But when you come home, you say, home, I'm home. You feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. You feel good about being here. That's what the holy people gave us. And in it, in our home, we're given protection. We're given complete internal and external powers. So here's our cosmic home. 
This is our home. The four mountains are here. Mm -hmm. The six mountains are here. That's our home. Here's our terrestrial home. But what everything that's embodied here is embodied here. That's why it's built in this fashion. Because the yin bene loved us so much and they said, here, she wish she has it, but give this to you. From this you're gonna think, from this you're gonna plan, from this you're gonna make your life, from this you're gonna exercise jihasin. You're gonna have hope. Your life is gonna be better. The future looks good. Everything is here. So Ray Austin and I are thinking, what's going on here at Navajo? What are some of the issues and problems that we're facing? One of the problems is <clears throat> when we talk about sovereignty, we always think about the Marshall Trilogy. We think about the federal government's definition of sovereignty. We think we say we're sovereign. When we talk about sovereignty, we think about the rainbow. God's kingdom. We think about, when we think about sovereignty, we're thinking about dependent sovereignty status. Koko, the neck is your bantha case of sovereignty that they know. Ha'i o, yet. From a Navajo perspective, from a Navajo thinking, what does sovereignty mean? What is it? Is there a name for it? Are there other names for it? How many different kinds of names are there? So here at the Net College, this is the 50th celebration. Where should we go? How should we move forward? What about the next 50 years? I think this is the place to wrestle with questions like that. This is the place to think about traditional Navajo thinking about the issues that we face at Navajo. How do we give a good foundation to the Navajo Nation so that we can move forward in a good way, like the holy people gave us? <coughs> we think, Ray Austin and I think, that what you have here If not, ah. In a, in, in a ceremony, this man really didn't talk about if not, ah. These are sacred mountains. It's our home. It's our terrestrial home. So, we started thinking, we said, maybe sovereignty means not, ah. And I catch about that. Government. Part of this So we're sitting around talking about this, thinking about this. This is what you should be doing here at the college. We need your help, you know. I'm getting older and older. I can't just think about this by myself. I need your help. So if we think and we believe that sovereignty is related to the mountains that's around us. It's a very different definition than what the federal government gave us as a definition of sovereignty. This is the root of who we are, how we're going to move. So our cosmic hogan is the tools of Natani. Natani, Leaders. We say council members are leaders. President, vice president are our leaders. But you're leaders too. <coughs> so how do you do sovereignty? Not a in the south. So how do we do sovereignty? We already know what that is. It's not a. 
planning, policy making, problem solving, peace making, language development, foundational law and law making, the government governing leadership. So we have just not a. We have not a. We have not a. We have not anis to make this work. Govern with wisdom, foresight, and persuasive authority. The net ethical. So, our cultural values, our values, our laws, our understanding, this provides a basis for how we organize ourselves. This is the Navajo way. So all these ideas that the holy people gave us, that's in front of us, that's right here, it's supposed to help us organize. It's supposed to help us find a way to move forward. But that's not what's going on. Why? Here's why. In 1493, <clears throat> Pope Alexander VI, whoever he is, issued infamous bull of demarcation. The Spanish explorers, before they even left Spain, they already split up the Navajo Nation. The Spanish explorers gave to Spain all the undiscovered country of the southwest line between the imaginary lines 100 miles west of the Azores and the Cape Verde Islands. And they said, this is ours. Our ancestors were sitting here doing what they were doing didn't even know somebody already claimed this land. But that's what happened. And subsequent bulls came, other decrees came, and they said, we're going to colonize these people. We're going to exploit them. We're going to vilify them. And we're going to convert them to Christians, in particular Catholicism, because they're pagan. They're heathens. So this was the effort that took place. So the Spanish colonial period lasted for between 1540 and 1821. The Mexican colonial period lasted in 1821 to 1846. After the Spanish couldn't conquer us, then on the Mexicans came. And they tried to do the same thing. Eleven treaties were signed. <clears throat> But we only talk about one treaty, 1868. Mm -hmm. Lots of treaties were signed, which gave us that. Eleven treaties were signed during these times with the Spanish or Mexican colonial government. Some of the treaties were signed in Hamas, where my relatives are from. Genealogically, we're actually from Hamas. My dish gives you not that. That's where my genealogical roots come from. Treaties were signed over there. So for more than 250 years, <clears throat> the Spanish and the Mexican disrupted our lives. And about one third of the Navajo people are enslaved. Mm -hmm. Even my own family, we have Mexican blood in us. So if I was to go to Ancestors.com and have to get the blood <laughs> they said, oh, you're part Mexican. That's why when we drive around, we always go to Taco Bell. <laughs> so one third of our people were put in, put in uh, as slaves. Many of them were sent down into Mexico. They had to work in the silver mines. A lot of them never came back. Two of my relatives never came back. Hmm. Only one grandma came back. The other two grandpas, they, they just probably became Mexican. We don't know. Mm -hmm. In modern times, my grandma always used to say, what happened to them? I wonder what happened to them. And they used to say, you probably have relatives too that are down there. We wonder where they're at. Mm -hmm. How are they doing? You know, there's a huge
Freedom Slave Trade. Then the American colonial period came around. 1846, the U.S. declared war on Mexico. Nine treaties were signed. <coughs> and then with them, a lot of our relatives perished in a concentration camp. So traditional Navajo philosophy was being attacked. These gifts that were given to us by the holy people was being wiped out. It was an all-out effort by the United States government to do away with Indian people, our ways, our life, way, our culture, our language, and the way we think. That's why some of us speak Navajo and some of us don't. It's not your fault. But you should make every effort to relearn your language. I have a nephew. I have a nephew. He didn't know how to speak Navajo very well. Now he speaks it fluently. He runs ceremonies. He runs meetings. Praise in Navajo. I'm really proud of him. You know? It's amazing. He put his mind to it, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when he goes to meetings, when he takes that medicine, he prays about it. He learned the language, and we relearned it. And he started speaking now, and we started praying in now, and now, now he runs meetings. Amazing. If he can do it, anybody can do it. So the result was distress in government, economics, education, health. That's why Navajo people <clears throat> are disenchanted with the Navajo government. And they say, oh, Navajo Nation Council is doing this. Ah, sh forget about those guys. <laughs> oh, they're doing it again. Ah, they just want to, uh, nobody, nobody cares, you know. And it's been going on for a long time. <clears throat> this is what happened. We had a governing structure in 1900, that was more of a confederacy. And then the federal government got involved and set up all these chapters. And all of a sudden, we became very different. We're finally coming back down to the Local Governance Act, through the Local Governance Act, to our original type of government. So it's sort of slowly moving back. There's some good signs, I think. I think the future looks looks pretty good. So here are the current definitions of sovereignty. <clears throat> this is what we have to live with. This is what our leaders have to deal with. A sovereign is a state vested with independent and supreme authority. Sovereign nation state, a state that possesses an independent <coughs> existence being complete in itself without being merely part of a larger a whole to whose government it is subject. Mix, mix words there. <clears throat> Sovereignty, supreme dominion, authority, or rule. A supreme political authority of an independent state. So this, these are the current definitions. <clears throat> this is where they came from, the Marshall Trilogy. In the 1800s, the Supreme Court cases, Johnson v. McIntosh, Cherokee Nation versus Georgia, Worcester, Worcester versus Georgia. This is where this definition comes from. This, through the Supreme Court Acts, we are considered dependent, domestic dependent nations. In other words, we depend on the federal government to live and survive. So when we talk about so tribal sovereignty, yeah, tribal sovereignty, people, hey, hey, hey. It's semi-sovereign powers. We're not truly sovereign mm -hmm. from a federal government perspective. It's based on racism and ignorance. So my talk is about the neck ashosha, sovereignty that the no, ha'i o yet, ha'i like that. And I told you that it's related to the mountains. It's related to the holy being's gift to us. Gave you a word. We think that that's what 
that's all the TV. You might have another word for it. It's from Zishnata. And Nata is doing sovereignty. Nata is doing sovereignty. Natanis are the ones that are supposed to carry on this duty and responsibility. So the current definitions of sovereignty gives the Navajo Nation, as well as all other tribes across the country, limited powers over how non-Indians conduct themselves on our land. We do not have power and authority, full power and authority over non-Indians living on our land. Mm -hmm. That's why if a non-Indian commits a crime on the Navajo Nation, they have to go to federal court. It favors non-Indian interests over native interests. The current definition of sovereignty favors non-Indians over Navajo interests. Congressional plenary power applied to native nations. <clears throat> At any time, the Congress of the United States can say, that land, we're going to take it. They can say that through plenary power. Are we sovereign? According to the Sanchez definition, no. Tribal sovereignty depends on federal acknowledgement. So when we talk about sovereignty, we have to get permission from the federal government to acknowledge the sovereignty that we have. Are we sovereign? No. So these definitions squeeze us from the outside in and makes us vulnerable, makes us less powerful. We're not able to do things that we're supposed to do. We're tied to the federal government. So, here are two different views of sovereignty. From the outside, <clears throat> when we talk about sovereignty, it's aristocracy based, based on kings and queens. It came from Europe, that idea came from Europe. Kings and queens were thought of as sovereign entities. So it's aristocracy based. From a Navajo perspective, it's holy beings based. Two very different ways of looking at the definition of sovereignty. From an outside perspective, there are a lot of definitions of sovereignty. I just read you three of them. They're all slightly different. On the Navajo side, it's sacred mountains focus. It's related to these mountains. We know these mountains. And we know what they have, the gifts that they have. From an outside perspective, sovereignty is temporary. When a new group of people get elected, it might change that definition of sovereignty. That's what Trump is doing right now. And sovereignty is going to mean something different. When it goes to a court case of the Supreme Court, they're going to redefine what sovereignty is. It's going to mean something different. From a Navajo perspective, it's permanent. Why? Because the holy people said, this is what it is. And you cannot change anything the holy people say. That's why we say, that's the way we talk to each other. From the outside, it has a limited emphasis on language and culture. The neck at it's culture and language emphasized. You have to know the mountains. You have to know the, the words related to the mountains. That's why you have to know your language. You have to study your language. You have to go back to what my nephew did, pray about it, and say, I want these words to come to me. Have karateen, somebody put karateen in your mouth and, you know, have that language come back to you. It's not impossible. So what must happen to restore harmony? <clears throat> so through these years, before the invasion of the non-Indians, we had our own governing structure. 
and all over the United States, different forms of government. Then the Indian Reorganization Act came about in 1934. Navajo Nation is not an IRA government, but it's an IRA-like government. The Navajo Nation government, if you got an Indian Reorganization Act type of government tribe here, and you match it up with what the Navajo Nation has, very, very similar. Now we're moving towards a different way of thinking about government. So these governing institutions must match Navajo beliefs about how authority should be organized. This is what I think needs to happen. We have to change the Navajo Nation government. It has to change. So it's Navajo focus. So it's Navajo inspired. So it's Navajo built. The government we have is not. It's from the federal government giving it to Navajo. The only place that I see where it's Navajo focused is the judicial branch through Navajo fundamental laws. The judicial branch has Navajo fundamental laws. The executive branch does not have a traditional thought process connected to it or the legislative branch. So, at a foundational level, we have to redefine the doctrines of sovereignty. And it has to be grounded in Navajo epistemology, Navajo thinking, Navajo way of thinking about things. Navajo view of sovereignty, as I said, is holy beings based, sacred mountains focus. It's permanent, it's forever. Culture and language emphasize. And why not go from the inside out? instead of being squeezed from the outside in. Not up, not up. So, the foundation here at the very bottom that has on it, it says something I talked about this earlier. This is Hojo, the holy people gave this to us. From there we have Tzif Not Up. Authority, power, laws, leadership, based on the mountains. Then you have not a sovereignty. We redefine it according to our own thinking and ways. Then when we have not a, when we do sovereignty, it's based on the mountains. Our not onis, our leaders, now have a way to make decisions based on traditional Navajo thinking, which leads to good decision making, good strategic planning. And I honestly think once we redefine sovereignty from a traditional Navajo perspective, we should change all the laws, starting with Title I, based on a redefined sovereignty from a Navajo perspective. I think only then can we really be on a true Navajo Nation building journey. So, what next? <clears throat> we have to change the law. We have to first redefine sovereignty, mm -hmm. and we have to change the government through rewriting all, all Navajo laws. <laughs> we have to strengthen the Navajo judicial branch. We have to redefine education, cultural, and economic sovereignty from a Navajo, traditional Navajo perspective. Ha'i'o yet nek eche, educational sovereignty, cultural sovereignty, economic sovereignty. What does that mean? That's what I think you should be studying here at the college. Eye ba'an tzita kes, n'cha ba'an tzita kes. To me, that's what the net college stands for, or should stand for. There should be a hub of activity here, thinking about this from a traditional level perspective. With all the elders that are here, if you don't have enough, you should bring more. Work with them, talk with them, figure this out. Because right now is the time to do it. 
there's no best time than right now. Right now, Indian people throughout the United States can exercise more sovereignty, even those defined by federal government. Right now is when we should be doing this. Right now is when we should be changing this. We should make an investment in Navajo culture and Navajo language. I honestly believe that despite what your $54 million, that's where the money should go. It should go to education. It should go to Navajo <clears throat> revitalizing Navajo culture and Navajo language. And we should get the medicine people sitting right side by side with the council members to think about how do we move the Navajo Nation forward. That's what I think we should do. <laughs> so the place of indigenous law, <clears throat> a nation's laws are the deepest expression of its culture. They say what we value and how we tend to get along and hold ourselves together as a people. For us as the next it's, it's already here in front of us. It's just like, like Mitchell said, it's right there. He says, it's right there. You just have to look. You have to see it. It's right there. What better place to see this than here at the college? So the next 50 years, what's going to happen? How are we going to do this? And I think we have to put a new memory in the minds of our children. A good friend of mine by the name of Satsang from <clears throat> Vancouver, British Columbia, this is what he said. He says, we have to put a new memory in the minds of our children. And I think it has to do with traditional Navajo thinking. <clears throat> Navajo Nation rebuilding is about realizing our dreams. And it's not for us necessarily. It's for these little ones, like that little girl there. And for the kids that are not born yet, there are going to be more children born. How are we going to take care of them? How do we want them to live? Right now, some of our kids, their days and nights are being mixed up. They're up all night, then they sleep all day. The holy people are up, up early in the morning, they're looking around and everybody's sleeping. We can't do that. And we're walking around like this with our phones, you know. Amen. When somebody's trying to talk to you, we're like, oh, well, I'm checking out this emoji. the <laughs> 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 There are better things to think about than emojis. Oh, nice. Emojis aren't going to give you a good life. It's not going to lead you to Hojo. It's not going to lead the Navajo Nation down the path of the innovation building. We're just going to walk off a cliff like this. <laughs> so, take care of yourselves. Watch how you think about things. Think, spend your time thinking about the most important thing. So when you're thinking, when you're thinking, stop thinking about stuff that you shouldn't be thinking about. Don't spend so much time on playing games. You know, nowadays you see these kids like this, you know. <laughs> I probably spent only one hour playing a game like that in my life because I have better things to do mm -hmm. you know, than doing car theft or whatever it is, those stuff, you know, all about <laughs> shooting people and living on TV. Think about stuff that needs to get done. Why? <clears throat> this is why. Life moves really fast. Mm -hmm. You cannot stop getting old. Since I've been standing here, you're older. You can't stop it. You can go get plastic surgery all you want and dye your hair all you want. You're going to still get old. <laughs> and it moves really fast. It's a knee. My uncle and I were herding sheep over here in the wheat fields. 
and he is physical. Now I have white hair. He has white hair. Mm -hmm. You're going to be at that same position. So don't waste your time. He goes, no. I'm saying this because I care about you. I love you. I want the best things for you.